The Star Sport Podcast is brought to you by Access Credit Union. Access Credit Union, funding dreams for over 50 years. Close your eyes and pull like down. <laughs> Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Hello and welcome to the Star Sport Podcast. My name is Jack McCarran of the Southern Star and I'm joined, as always, by Star Sport editor, Kieran McCarthy. Before we kick things off, I'd just like to give a gentle reminder to our listeners and viewers to please rate, review and subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify and YouTube. Some housekeeping to take care of before we start this week's show. We're thrilled to announce that Access Credit Union are back on board as partners for the year ahead. Local businesses like Access Credit Union are so important for media organisations like ourselves. So it's great that we can team up and hopefully help each other grow in 2022. And with that taken care of, the Star Sport Podcast is back and we're kicking off 2022 with a bang. Jack Gower is a world-class alpine skier who has his sights firmly set on securing a ticket to February's Winter Olympics in Beijing as part of Team Ireland. How on earth have the Southern Star found a West Cork link to the 2022 Winter Olympics, we hear you ask? Well, as it turns out, it's not just rowing that Skibbereen is capable of producing Olympic caliber athletes for. Gower, who hails from Chichester on the south coast of England, is eligible to represent Team Ireland through his grandmother, who was born in Dublin and raised in Skibbereen. On this week's podcast, we'll chat to Jack about his Olympic ambitions and his West Cork roots. Later on the show, we'll be joined by All Ireland winner Paddy Cassan to chat about the importance of speed training, athlete preparation, and the secret to his playing longevity. But Kieran, first of all, it's a new year, which means it's time to give us your hopes and ambitions for the year ahead. What's on the McCarthy Sporting Wishlist for 2022? It's a very broad question to start off 2022 with Jack. But um, first off, Happy New Year to all our listeners. Great to get to have this, the podcast up and running again. And like you said earlier, thanks to Access Credit Union for, for getting on board with us. So uh, very exciting 2022 ahead, we hope. And I think my hope, Jack, is just that we have a, as normal a sporting year as we possibly can. I think for the first time since pre-COVID times, this is as normal a year that we could have. Um, the last two years have obviously been quite different in terms of, of their their look and what's been played and so on. So touch wood, everything works out in 2022 and we have an, a, a normal year. And you can see that with the McGrath Cup is on, that that much maligned McGrath Cup that um often ridiculed, but it, it's on now and it's given us live football in January. Um, so hopefully, hopefully we have a, a very normal year. And I'm just interested to see I suppose certain things like how Keith Rick and Fairs as Cork senior football manager. I think everyone is going to be interested to see how Keith gets on. Um, he's he's in the hot seat now. He's he's changing up the squad. He's he really is changing up the squad. So and the league is kicking off against Roscommon at, at the end of the month away. I think it's um, January 30th in Dr Hyde Park, and it's it's a tough Division Two league for Cork. So that's one thing I'm very interested to watch how how Cork get on. And I just hope, like I said, it's going to be as normal a year as as is possible, and we'll be there every step of the way. Won't it be nice when this eventually happens, that on a Friday afternoon when the injury updates are coming through, whether it be for inter-county football, hurling or Premier League soccer, and it's just a hamstring strain that we have to worry about our favourite players suffering rather than another COVID case that's going to see them isolating and missing a game. So when we get back to complaining about hamstring strains, I think we'll finally know we're back to normality. But yeah, I think Keith Rickens... uh, Role as Cork senior boss is going to be a really interesting story to follow this year. And one that I'm looking forward to following as well is the continued progression of Gavin Coombs with Munster in Ireland because he has been phenomenal in the green and red over the last 18 months or so. And he's fast becoming a stellar part of the Munster team. And this is probably his biggest year to date in his career because he needs to nail down a starting spot and prove himself as the future or hopefully prove himself as the future of both Ireland and Munster Rugby. 100% Jack and I suppose when you talk about West Cork sport for 2022 there's so many sports people and so many sports teams across so many sports but just on rugby alone I was watching Munster Ulster um, last weekend and 
just again to see that West Cork influence there was incredible. Fineen, literally, John Hodnett, who um, big hopes for John Hodnett from Ross Garbury. Obviously, you mentioned Gavin there, uh, Jack Crowley from Inish and um, Josh Witchley came on as well. So you really have that, that West Cork influence there with Munster. So it'll be interesting to see how, how they get on. But even the likes of Phil Healy, I know it's a non-Olympic year, but she's a huge year coming up. She's the world indoors in March. And she's the, the world and European outdoors later in the summer as well. And Phil actually kicked off her, her year in style just a weekend, just gone. She ran a 51.96 for the 400 metres, which is just two hundredths of a second off her indoor PB. And that was her first race of the year. So that's just a, an impressive start to, 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 to Phil Healy's year. And when you think about it, the Olympics is only two years away now. It's just such a shorter Olympic cycle that all of a sudden with Phil and the Roars and so on, and um, this is an important year because next year they'll be qualifying for the Paris Olympics. So it's going to whiz by before we know it. But like I said, hopefully it'll be a normal year and hope we get to enjoy lots of trills and spills in West Cork sport. Well, one West Cork sports story we didn't think we'd be covering up until a week or so ago is the West Cork representation at the Tokyo Winter Olympics, the Beijing Winter Olympics, excuse me, which kick off in February. An alpine skier, Jack Gower, is very much in the frame to represent Team Ireland. And Kieran, you've spoken to him. He's obviously from England originally, but he's got strong links to Skibbereen. So maybe tell us a bit about Jack and his links to Skibbereen before we hear from the man himself. You mentioned it at the outset there, Jack, that Skibbereen is so well known as an, as an Olympic rowing town. Um, Skib now has gold, silver and bronze Olympic medals from the last two games, thanks to the, the, the exploits, the well-told exploits of Skibbereen rowers. But now, since Skibbereen has conquered the Summer Olympics, why not conquer the Winter Olympics? Why stop at the Summer Olympics when there's a, a Winter Olympics there as well? And that's why it's great to see Jack Gower. Um, he's, uh, he's, his grandmother was born, his grandmother on his father's side was born in Dublin, but she was raised in, raised in Skibbereen. And it was actually there where she met her, her husband. Um, and Jack will fill us in uh, quite soon in this, where she met her husband, who was in the, the British Navy. And... Then they went off to their post in Chile. But when Jack's father was born, he spent all his summers up till he was 13 or 14 in Skibbereen. Um, so it's just it's just a great local link, a great local link. And every sports story, and I, I always say it when I'm on Twitter, I'm looking for, for different links to, to these, these big stories. So we found a Skibbereen link to the Winter Olympics. If you go back before before Christmas, we found an Inishana link to Max Verstappen winning the, the Formula One uh, championship. So if you look hard enough, you'll always, there's a, there's a West Cork person everywhere in the world and they're always stuck in the, in the great sports stories. So Jack Gower is um, an Alpine skier, like you said, born in the UK, but he switched over to represent Ireland uh, last year and he's now on course, touch wood, to be selected to represent Ireland at the uh, Winter Olympics. He'll actually find out this Sunday, the 16th, whether an email will drop or, or his phone will ring. Um, hopefully he'll get the nod to say, Jack, you've been picked to represent Ireland in Beijing next month. And as you'll hear from hear from now, as he fills us in and he's and his West Cork links, um, he also gives us a peek behind the curtain of Alpine skiing, Jack. And I know you're a fellow who likes your who who's a sports fan as well, but Alpine skiing is, is different gravy altogether. It's like the speeds they travel, 130, 40, 150 kilometers an hour down those slopes. And We'll chat too about some of the injuries that Jack Gower has had over the years. And my God, it's, it's enough to make the, the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. But um, it's just great to find a West Cork link to another big Irish story. Yeah, and just one word further on Jack before we hear from him, because I know there's probably people listening to this podcast who've watched the cricket on Sky Sports over the years. I know I've often found myself up late at night watching the Ashes coverage from down under before it was so rudely taken away from Sky and handed to BT. But the man who used to man the studio in Sky was David Gower, also an English cricketing legend, not just a TV broadcaster. He's also Jack's uncle, so a very talented sporting family. Skibbereen has already conquered the water that flows. Now we're hoping to conquer the water that freezes. Here's Jack Gower. <laughs> The exploits of our local rowers at the last two Summer Olympics, where they've won Olympic gold, silver and bronze, has put Skibbereen on the world map. And now a man with strong Skib connections is hoping to make headlines at the upcoming Winter Olympics in Beijing. We're delighted to welcome to the podcast, Jack Gower. Um, welcome to the podcast, Jack. Hi, thank you very much for having me, Kieran. It's um, really, really, really glad to be here. And um, yeah, it's, uh, I'm pretty excited about today. 
we've talked to various sports people all, all over the world on this podcast from from New Zealand to Italy to Spain to America and so on. But it's it's the first time we're chatting to someone from Austria because that's where you're based right now, is it? <laughs> that's right. So I have an apartment in Austria, which I, is, is, is my base. And, and we kind of that's uh, we move around that. Currently, I have a I have a, uh, a partnership with Swiss ski team, so we actually go over to Switzerland a lot, um, and we we do a lot of training and racing there. But it's nice to have a a base here in in Austria. So we're making a small bit of Star Sport podcast history here by by talking to you in Austria, Jack. But before we we chat about <laughs> about skiing and your career and your journey in the Winter Olympics and all that. Um, I have to ask you about your links to Skibbereen, which I believe are true your late grandmother on your father's side. Can you tell us a small bit more about that? Exactly. Yeah. Um, so my grandmother, exactly on my on my father's side, uh, was born in Dublin and then and then grew up in Skibbereen, um, and then she married my grandfather, who was in the navy, and they and they uh, he got posted in Chile, actually, where my my father was born, uh, but still, my dad spent all his summers all his summers in Skibbereen and um, definitely very, very close affiliation uh, with my family. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a beautiful area. So. Oh, um, have, you, have you had a chance yourself to visit Skibbereen over the years? Have you been here or is it on your, on your to do to visit list in the years to come? It's definitely on my uh, to do list. Um, I'm going there this summer, which I'm really excited about. Um, yeah. Very excited about going. Oh, that's brilliant. And obviously, through your through your grandmother, so I suppose that opened the door for you could um, represent Ireland. So how did that move come about? So that because you you have represented Great Britain at the highest level before. So why did you decide to to to, to switch to Ireland? Um, yeah, so I decided to switch to Ireland because um, what they were able to provide for me was 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 brilliant. You know, I I finished my season. I had a chat with. Um, a couple of the uh, Alpine team um, who are making decisions and and they were just super supportive of, of my goals and had a very fair take on everything um, they, they they work as a charity and, and they don't you know they're, they're just very they're very fair they want to help me um, succeed at my goals and they're very happy kind of letting me run a program which is going to get me to to where I want so they were very supportive of me partnering up with Switzerland which has been a huge um, a huge win for me and, and and really helped really helped me for this season um so but yeah it's it's been it's been really brilliant for me and I'm I'm so so glad and so proud to be um skiing for Ireland this year when I suppose when people think of Irish sport alpine skiing doesn't come to <laughs> come into our head straight away because first the, the, the complete lack of snow um but so how did how did, how did you first get involved in in alpine skiing back home yeah it's a good question so I learned on plastic slopes um in uh, so I learned on plastic slopes and, and I, I competed in other sports when I was young and we, we moved house and um I was fortunate and my parents said you know we can we can do this we can support you if you want to do a sport so I was like I would really love to go skiing so I started skiing on the plastic and uh, then I went on my first snow camp and I had I had a bit of success when I was when I was young you know when I first transitioned to the senior category um, or, or competing against um, uh, everyone, like a 15 and above. And I was, for, for a time, I was number one in the world for my age. And then, and then it kind of snowballed from there, excuse the pun, um, because, because I got sponsorship and, 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 it, was, and it looked like I, my, my career could go some, somewhere. So that was, that was how it all came about. Um, and probably to the, to the horror of my parents nowadays, but it's great. Yeah, it's, I've loved the whole experience. I know, fast forward all these years and you're still making headlines, Jack, but um, looking for a crash course so an Alpine skiing, I know there's different aspects to it and you're making your name in this, is it the Super Giant Slalom, which is a speed event. Can you tell us about that and what's involved in it? Because I was reading up on a, an interview with you there that you did recently and, and uh, the speeds of 120 kilometers an hour were mentioned and that kind of, the hairs are standing in the back of my head mm-hmm. um, reading that. So just tell us a small bit about, um, about Slalom, the Giant Slalom and yeah, the Super yeah, Giant Slalom. So there, there are five disciplines in alpine skiing, which is downhill, super G, GS, slalom, and combined, which is quite a lot. <coughs> um, but I, I compete primarily in the speed events. So I, I compete in four events, which is downhill, super G, combined, and GS. Uh, but I focus on the speed events. <coughs> and like you say, 
we uh especially in the down we go we hit some pretty pretty fast speeds of 140 plus you know in the, in the world cup season the guys top speeds kind of clock out at around 160 but it's normally in that 140 area um <clears throat> You have large jumps, you know, the, the biggest jumps we do are about 90 meters far. Um, and then as you go down from downhill to super to GS, the, the turns get bigger and the speeds decrease and it becomes more technical, which is also, it, it adds, it adds other elements. But I think um, in terms of having a blue ribbon event, it would, it would, it would be the downhill. Um, I mean, that's what everyone kind of tunes in to see and it's a, you know, obviously a very exciting event. Uh, um, and that's, that's sort of where my, where my focus is. I, I, I'm, I'm very, this year I'm competitive in four disciplines, but focusing on speed events. When you're traveling that fast and at that speed, how do you have time to think and react? <laughs> um, so it's, it's like, it's like a lot of things in life. Once you start to train and, and prepare and do these things, repetitively things start to slow down um and that is very much the case in skiing once once your skill set improves and you've done it for years on years those speeds don't feel like really like the speeds they are you you, you kind of you feel very calm and you can make those decisions at high speed um and really when things are going well is when it feels really slow and and you feel very in control um, so it's, it's, it's for sure a challenge. And that's, that's for a lot of athletes in skiing, it's, it's, a, it's a big draw and a, and a very exciting part of the sport. But you also do, with preparation, get, get more comfortable and, 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 and stable with that speed. Do you feel so, Jack, that you have a need for speed part of that point? Because like you said there, like it's a, it's a high-risk sport or so much involved. But you, you're involved in the sport because you love it and, and, and you love like even traveling that fast down the slopes, like kind of, do you feel yourself that it's just a part of you, like that you just really, really love moving that fast, traveling that fast? Yeah, yeah. Um, I've, I've been lucky that, you know, I, I've always been quite uh, quite a fan of, of going fast and it was a great outlet. You know, it's a brilliant place where you have a lot of freedom and you have, you don't, the whole point is to go faster. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a great chance for, for, for young kids with lots of energy to kind of have something to focus on. And that, and that was the case for me. I was, you know, I had a lot of energy and, and going fast was, was, was something which really kind of honed my, my concentration. And it was a brilliant, it was a brilliant outlet for me. And I, I, I loved it when I was young and I still love it. It's a, it's a, this is definitely a, a major part of, of, of why I got into it. And I mentioned earlier, it's a high risk sport too, and it's not without its risks. And I was looking at some of the injuries you've you've had over the years. And dear God, it's some list, Jack, you put together. There's been is it broken both collarbones, dislocated your right shoulder twice, suffered three leg breaks, dislocated your hip, mm. had ligament damage to both knees, a serious concussion. Like you obviously know the dangers involved. So how would you put that out of your mind then when you are in action, when you are at the top of the slope and ready to go again, to not think about what's happened before? I think it starts quite a long way before you start skiing. You know, one, when you're recovering from injuries, you have to accept that these things do happen in mm. sport and especially in a, a sport like skiing, which has, you know, there's, there's definitely repercussions when you crash at that speed. Um, so I think you have, to, you have to be comfortable with that. But of course, when you go to slightly more challenging tracks and, and faster tracks, then, then these thoughts do come up in your mind. And, and that's, that's a massive part of the job is being able to control your thoughts and your thought processes through the, through the competition and through training, but especially in competition, you need to be able to hone in, focus on what you can control. And, and at that, at that point, you know, you, you've made your decisions mm -hmm. and, 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 and there, there isn't a point to back out there. You know, when, once you start to have those doubts and you let them creep in, that's generally when you end up having these accidents. And, and so you, you have to be pretty firm with yourself on that stuff. Preparation is obviously key, kind of just uh, you need uh, the right preparation. So talk to me what a, what a normal week is like for you right now. <laughs> so right now uh, in Austria, it's, um, it's normally about 
four or five days on and then a day off. Um, and and our, our days normally, you know, normally wake up around 5.45, um, go, go training, uh, finish around 12, drive home. Uh, we have then after that, I take a little rest, I go to the gym. It depends, you know, if, if I've got training the next day, it's quite uh, recovery focused. So core stretching, recovery on a bike some explosive work maybe and then if it's the if it's the day before a day off then i get a strength workout or some sort of some sort of anaerobic interval session and then in the what we have to do also is we got to do video analysis so every day we have every uh, run recorded on a videotape and we analyze what's happening there and we break that down in conjunction with equipment so it's you know the equipment side is so important and you have to look at the equipment um look at the equipment look at the skiing and see how you can kind of marry the two to 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 get a top result and that's you know really that's 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 uh that's in a nutshell what we what we kind of do in a day-to-day um yeah on a on a day-to-day routine and obviously everything then builds towards the, the big events and the Winter Olympics are on in Beijing next month. So what's the latest with the Winter Olympics and yourself? Um, well, for me, it's definitely the focus of the year. Uh, I've been fortunate to have good results this year. I've had the best ever result for an Irish alpine skier in the history of the, of the team, which is brilliant. And um, yeah, I'm, 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 doing a decent job in, in, in multiple events at the moment. So, you know, the, with, with, with all these things, there's, there's, um, you know, you never, you never know what's going to happen until you get a phone call or receive an email telling you you've got a plane ticket or, or not. But at the same time, I, I wouldn't, I would say I'm in a, I put myself in a good position at least. Phil is that best ever result of an Irish Alpine skier of when and where was that? So that was in Zinal and that was in Super G. Um, and that was on the Europa Cup Tour, which is sort of like the kind of, it's sort of like Formula 2, except um, quite a lot of the top skiers use it as a, as a, as a warm-up race, especially the early races. So uh, I, I got a 30th position with uh, a very world-class field, which you know, translates pretty well to what you can kind of look at in, in major competitions. The, the, the level is extremely high in the Europa Cup and um, to, to, yeah, it's, it's extremely high in the Europa Cup. And I think um, that, that, was, that was my result. And it was, um, yeah, I was fortunate. I, I feel very proud to have the best result of any Irish skier. So you've obviously put yourself in a good position for the Winter Olympics. So is it literally a case now of waiting for that phone to ring or waiting for that email to say you've been officially selected? And if so, is there a deadline that you know, okay, within the next two or so weeks, I should get that call or I should get that email? Yeah, so it's the 16th um, for us. We find out on the 16th and then we um, then we go on um, like a, a pre-game camp just to get some training, kind of create a bubble with the whole team, excuse me, <coughs> um, create a bubble with the team uh, before we fly and just make sure that everyone's healthy and safe because that's a huge priority for, for these games. Um, but yeah, I find out on the 16th. Touch food, you get that call, you get that email. And if so, how much will you look forward to the Winter Olympics and everything that goes with being at Winter Olympics? Yeah, I'm very looking at like, Obviously, I'm I'm really looking forward to it, but at the same time, it's um, there's very much uh, there's there's a job to be done when I when I go. And as a team, I think with the results that we've kind of had, we we have fairly high expectations, and um, I think of course I'll I'll enjoy it, but definitely we want to we want to get a job done. Um, that's our kind of primary focus, and then. After that, we'll, we'll definitely, I'll definitely, if if it all happens, I'll, I'll be extremely proud afterwards and um, grateful for the, the opportunity. These are fierce, exciting times, Jack. And like I said earlier, 
at the outset, um, West Cork and Skibbereen has a has a strong tradition and history now in the Summer Olympics and touch wood that you will get that call um, by the 16th and we'll be cheering you on from, from West Cork at the Winter Olympics. Thank you so much for joining us on the, on the podcast, Jack, and very best to look for the, for the weeks and months ahead. Absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. It was, um, it was great chat- chatting today. The Star Sport Podcast is brought to you by Access Credit Union. Access Credit Union, funding dreams for over 50 years. Twenty ten Cork All Ireland winning footballer Paddy Kassan is somewhat of a renaissance man when it comes to athlete preparation and speed training. He's also still playing his trade with his home club Clyde Rovers and shows no signs of slowing down. Kieran, you spoke to Paddy about a new program he's starting in Clonakilty based on speed training for athletes. So tell us a little bit about this and about what Paddy's up to these days. So I think um, all all Cork sports fans will know of Paddy Gassan, um, very well-known Cork footballer in his day. And he's now um, still playing with Clyde Rovers, but he's also very well established as an athlete um, athlete development and performance coach. And that's why we we did chat there for, for this week's podcast, because he's, he's a couple of interesting programs going on at the moment. And the first one is actually, it's the Paddy Gassan Speed Academy. And that's kicking off in Clannock Kilty GA Club on, on January 23rd. So, it's, it's, it's only what less than two weeks away and it's going to be held on Sunday morning so that's a program it's open to the boys and girls irrespective of your of your sport or your club and um, the, the players must be born between 2007 and 2009 and Paddy will explain to us quite soon what this program entails but it's very interesting that that Paddy thinks that there is room for improvement in terms of speed and um, in not only the GA but in, in all sports and it actually reminds me of when I was talking to Shane McCormick before and that's Phil Healy's coach and Shane was in with the Tipperary hurdlers a couple of years back because Tipperary saw a gap in the market to improve the speed of the players and and I think it worked that year because as far as I know Tip won the All-Ireland that year so um, Paddy Gassan is, is kind of he can see this gap in the market too for want of a better word where he feels he can help athletes um, run faster and that will obviously help help them in their sport so we chat about that and we also chat about his his jigsaw approach and that is coach mentorship program and that's what a party offers to either coaches teams individuals how he can help teams coaches individuals improve as players and that that's quite interesting quite interesting too and it's probably topical at this time of the year because we're in that off-season time, let's say, if it's Club GA and uh, the county leagues will be starting up quite soon. I think they're starting off in February and before we know it, we'll be hitting spring and the summer months. So it, it's a good time for for players, teams, coaches, managers, clubs to get their house in order um, before they start their, their championship tilts um, in, a, in a couple of months' time. So myself and Paddy got through an awful lot, but I started off asking him first about the Paddy Kassan Speed Academy. We're joined now on the Star Sport podcast by a man well known within the county and well known without the county. It's former Cork footballer Paddy Kazan, current Clyde Rovers footballer. He's still going strong and also very, very well known in coaching circles as well. Happy New Year to you, Paddy, and welcome to the podcast. Yeah, thanks very much. Happy New Year too. Uh, we have a couple of, of, I suppose, topics to have a chat about for, for this week's podcast. And I'm going to start off asking you about the Paddy Kassan Speed Academy, because this is something that, that's caught my eye. So this is um, this is a, an academy that's going to run for six weeks in Clannacilty GA Club on Sunday mornings from 10 a.m. 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. And it's starting on January 23rd. Um, it's a program that's open to all, all players, girls and boys, irrespective of your sport or your club. Um, the players must be born between 2007 and 2009. Uh, so it's a, it's a very interesting concept, um, Paddy, the Speed Academy. Can you talk to me a small bit about the thought, pro- thought process behind it? Well, I suppose, first of all, the whole um, subject of speed, is something, that's obviously something when I'm involved in athlete development, strength and conditioning, they've had an interest for a good number of years, you know, and even something even like still playing the game. It's something that, you know, you'd be trying to incorporate into your own training also, obviously, so that you can still play at a high enough level, you know, and, um, but I just see from maybe from being involved in preparing teams or, or working with individuals, um, sometimes there can be like, everyone wants to be fit and everyone wants to be, maybe get strong or maybe get bigger, but there's kind of not, not appreciation or not an understanding of maybe what needs to be done to get faster. Or maybe there's a kind of a situation where, you know, I am what I am like, and I can't improve. And then my thing, I suppose is like, right, 
we all can't be as quick as say Usain Bolt for argument's sake, <laughs> but still, but we all have our own physical potential or our own journey, you know. And at the end of the day, if you're not like it's like any skill, if well, if you're like if you're not going to practice something, well, you're certainly not going to get better at it. Whereas something, whereas then if you put the practice into it, specific to your ability right now, well, then then certainly then it can be improved. And I suppose that's the whole purpose of this slide is that, well, if I've previously done some, obviously I do individual work, but I've done some kind of um, clinics and different things with different groups. But this is kind of maybe hopefully, obviously, um, this is the start of a new year, like, and this is kind of the, the start of a kind of like a pilot in one sense of a number of projects based around this whole speed development over the next 12 months. And this area of speed development in GA, and I know that your academy, like you're taking in all different sports, but just take it in GA for a second. It's very interesting. I'm thinking back to a couple of years back where Shane McCormick, who was Phil Healy's um, coach, where Shane was involved with the Tipperary Senior Hurdlers because they saw they saw a gap in the market to bring Shane in to help to help improve the speed and running style and running of, of their players. So um, there is there is room for improvement in this. Like I know we were talking before Christmas, and you made a great point that um, that people are not unaware of, of of this. So it's a it is an area for for GA players and all sports players can maybe tap into and improve on. It is like, and I suppose the first thing was acknowledged. There's obviously just plenty of good work being done out there by very good people, also like in in the areas of speed development and and like. But it's just, I suppose it's it, if you look at the game, like the being fast like irrespective of a field sport you might that's we'll always we look at games and we see big moments in games or players a lot of the time it's it's that 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 speed you know and I say but then we look back and saying right but are we actually training to develop that and then um you kind of say then maybe not and, you know and I'm not I know it's easy to to look at into county because that's what we're seeing on tv or whatever or live at big matches but even come back down to all the levels back down to club level back down to underage particularly you know it i don't think there's enough focus being put on that you know and and um and that's yeah so i just think that it's it's the same as kicking a ball or or or, or striking a slitter like it's 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 you know if, if we i suppose way, it's too important an attribute not to be practicing it kind of way like but then there's but then there's different reasons why then maybe how you should practice it what you need to focus on depending as i said on your age your experience your, your physical ability right now and so on you know what can those attending your academy over the next couple of weeks expect well first i think the first of all it's just you know it's not that everything they get to see from me is going to be new but i suppose first of all it's just about getting an understanding of why they're doing something or why they need to do something you know, because in the day, I think everything, you know, the best players or the best athletes, it's not about necessarily about the program. It's about actually how they go about it. Do you know, because there's, there's many people following maybe similar programs, but actually how they execute it. So my thing first is about trying to create an understanding of why they're doing something. So then, then when it comes to um, practicing it, firstly, obviously, in, when I'm there as such that they'll actually kind of, um, I say, buy into it, like, but they'll kind of they'll be focused on what they're doing. You know, and then obviously then the, the, cha- the challenge from there, then obviously when they go away from there, then the, 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 the young athletes of the future, like that are focused on getting improvement, well, then they'll, there's a greater chance then they will put in that extra practice themselves to try and get improvement, similar to what they would do. Like, as I said, the best hurdlers or the best footballers, that didn't just improve by just doing um, two or three sessions a week. They were doing their own individual practice away from team sessions and so on. So that's the for- that would be the first part. And then I suppose just, it's, it's a process Obviously, when you have a number of athletes, you know, obviously, if you have a one-to-one, you can take it to a greater level. But still, over the number of weeks, just focusing, first of all, can you get into the right positions? Mm-hmm. So that's, I know I mentioned speed. For, of course, we when we think of speed, we're thinking of linear speed, which is running straight forward or straight ahead. But also, there's just, just change of direction. There's reversing, et cetera, and, and um, stopping and starting. It's all about, can you get into those right positions and just creating understanding around that? And then from there, then, you're like you're you're developing that then to kind of saying you're on your coordination and your ability to move over different distances and then obviously then regards to field sports like you can be very fast but unless you can make the right decision at the right time well then you might be able to transfer that speed into a game so then i suppose there's a bit of decision making and games and, and stuff like that which which come later on in the over the six weeks but the primary focus still all the time throughout the six will, will be that kind of linear focus, that acceleration, that max velocity, and can, can we get into those positions and, and, and um, um, execute that at, at the, the right speeds and positions, you know? For those so who are interested in finding out more about this Academy party and, and, and just checking out how it works, how can they get in contact with you to get some more information? 
well obviously I, I will I will be advertising it through my own um uh, social media and Twitter and so on but but then um on my website www.pkperformance.e there'll be a link on the website in regards to booking a place on the the Speed Academy and just to re- reiterate previously before like with some of these clinics and some of these camps you know you could turn up on the day and maybe but this will all be done um to book a place in the camp will all be done online in advance and there'll be no there'll be no basically places um you will be unable to turn up on the day as such and and and, and uh, book in a place. But the best to look at it. It sounds like a very exciting initiative that, that you're kicking off there. And I also want to talk to you about the, the Jigsaw approach. And this is your coach mentorship program. And this is this is very interesting for this time of year, the year as well, because it's that dormant time of the GA season where, where, where clubs are, I suppose, starting to put the building blocks together for a new season full of hopes, dreams and, and, and targets. So um, what exactly is this Jigsaw approach that, 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 you're, that you're running at the moment, Paddy? I suppose in simple ways, I suppose it's a basically, it's giving the, the like, whether it's the coach, the manager, the trainer, or someone involved in the, in, in the background, or even could be someone involved in the club itself in a higher position, that the ability to have that conversation. Because mm-hmm. sometimes I suppose, like, there's never been such a um, access to information out there at the moment. Like, whether you can, as I said, you can listen to a podcast, you can read a newspaper, you can, a book. Um, you can do a course. There's loads. Just we all, as we all are aware, like or you can watch some other team train and so on. But then, to basically to 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 kind of apply those that learnings or apply that information to your own specific situation. Sometimes we all a lot like I don't know myself. I've been in that position. That we're always saying right, but if we can have that conversation, I think that can help apply that and, and basically improve the, the coach's ability then to make better decisions in regards to their own preparation. So it's not a case of like, right, here's four drills to work on tackling or here. Um, now that may be a solution further down the line or whatever, but it's more about how their, their processes and how they like basically, right, why are we doing this? How are you going about it? But why have you decided you're doing this? And you know what I mean? Like, it's just kind of a sub because that's what that's what's ongoing. If you're a, a coach that wants to prepare the team as best you can, you're continually planning, reflecting, learning, and it's just. But sometimes, but that, like, but how often is it there? Like, where you can have that conversation with someone to tease things out about how you go about things, do you know? And and that's be, so. Then it's a, it's a case of then that by having those conversations, and we all learn that way by having those conversations. That then when you're there on your own or you're planning the next week or the next cycle or the next phase of training, then there's a greater chance um, you'll improve in that process. Now, again, but this is wide open. Like this isn't, there's so many different things. If this way, there's the whole jigsaw. Everyone's jigsaw is different regards to, um, like when I, I quote a jigsaw, is that's everything that feeds into it to, they may contribute to getting a better performance from your team. So I suppose the, the, the challenge for me is from, from speaking to the coach is, is coming to kind of uh, gathering all that information and basically what, what is it that, because there's loads of things we can do to improve, but what is it that they need right now or what do they need in the short term? And, and then creating kind of identifying a problem as such and then creating an intervention around that based on um, that group and environment and, and to, to move things forward. Because what you're talking about there, Paddy, is you, you create a programme or an approach that's tailor-made for the group of players that you're dealing with because we, we see it a lot where... Um, I've been at underage games where, there, where there's a senior team training and a, and one of the parents might be looking at the senior team training to see what they're doing can they apply to, to something else but it doesn't like you can't take a training program from one team and apply it straight to your own team it do, it's not that simple if it was everyone would be the Tyrones and Dublins of this world so but you're talking about there's so many pieces to the jigsaw so seeing what works for that particular group of players that particular club so that's the piece of the jigsaw is it? It is, but it might necessarily be. It's it's trying to review, like as you said, like there could be a scenario there of like we can go to a workshop, and I've been guilty of this. I remember as younger, and you're going to a workshop, and you'd see someone doing a certain driller, and you just say, oh, "Well, I should do that. Mm-hmm. That must be what I need because he's doing it, and he's very good, you know." And then, but then you actually, but then it's not something you might need at all, based on what is it actually this group needs, what are the strengths and weaknesses this group needs, is it, is what we're doing related to what we want them to do in the game. Which and he said it mightn't be because we all have different um, players of different roles in the field, players of different game plans depending on their age. Like as I say, you might like what the senior team is doing might be relative, might be suitable for the the young underage team, but then depending on time, space, numbers, etc., you just might need to be tweaked. Sometimes it might need you might have a great plan, but it's in identifying maybe why still why is why isn't improvement happening, 
And then it could be a number of reasons. You might let's say you've identified an area for improvement. You might only be doing it once every couple of weeks. Is there, are we getting enough repetition? How are we delivering it? How are we coaching it? How are we giving feedback? Etc. There's so many little things. How are we analyzing it? It's, you know, and again, the key here is like it's that's how, and, and I suppose I'm just trying to use my own experience, having been involved in obviously I certainly don't know it all, but you know, having been involved in a lot of management teams um at all different ages and all different grades, we'll call it like, and obviously it's on, that's ongoing, and just trying to use that to guide um the coach or the club in the right direction in regards to what they need to do. One of the lines on your on your website um, stuck out to me. It was better preparation equals better players equals better potential performance. That preparation is so important, part, isn't it? Well, it is. It is. And it's was again, you say, right, the constraints. We don't we're not say a club team, irrespective of, of age, you know, or, or a grade, which you're together maybe a couple of hours a week. So again, based on that, what do we need to do to get the maximum from that? And that's, and that's, I'm not trying, again, rather than thinking, I'm not trying to overcomplicate it, but actually I was trying to make it more simple. And if we can be, it's identify right, we have X amount of hours. So what's, what is it that we need? Or how, first of all, identify, are we fully sure this is what we need? But also then, right, how are we going to go about executing that? And that's if we can, at the end of the day, if we can, <clears throat> excuse me, if we can improve that process, well then, but um, the planning and the execution, but so then ultimately then, our preparation is going to be better. And then that's an ongoing thing then over a longer period of time, from week to week, month to month, and over the course of a season. And um, yeah, so I just think it ultimately when you go out, when a team's gone out on, um, uh, to play a match on a given day, ultimately, you know, you're going, you, you, you want, they're going to play the way they train, like, as such, like. So again, depending on, that's why ultimately, yeah, so I think if the better our preparation, then the, 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 the better potential for performance. If there's a, a coach or a manager or a chairman or a club listening to this podcast now and they're thinking, okay, that's something that I that I want to tap into. Um, how does the relationship work between you and the club or the coach? Well, first of all, again, it's there's a it'll be on my um the website again, the, the www.pkperformance.e, and you'll see a link to the jigsaw approach. And then from there, then it gives more detail around again what I've discussed here, plus a few different uh uh just drop down menus regards to again specific questions you may have regards to what what's involved and it's once they get in touch then it's just an initial phone call again just you know and again just getting a bit of background information as such and then based on that then initially kind of coming to kind of agreement then about like what what's the best way forward do you know and again like the, the initial thing could, like could be one scenario now say with a recent client like is that you you're actually going to have a, like say a meeting with the management team so that's something that they want. So rather than something with the managers, with the management team and how they're going to cre- maybe create their vision for the year, or how they're going to plan their program for the year. So, so again, it's just, an, the, but the primary thing is initially just making contact, setting up an appointment for a meeting and just getting a preliminary conversation around how, the, how, how um, we might like this to work. Is in your coaching, your journey, your, your athlete, your athlete development journey, like your, you, where you are right now, is it everything you've learned so far as a player, as coach involved in, in the various setups, um, whether that's intercounty or club? Do you feel all that is coming together for you? Like that's your jigsaw in, in a way, Paddy. Like every every little bit that you've learned so far, you're putting that together now and hoping to kind of to, to share that knowledge with clubs, players, managers out there. Um, it's, I suppose it's my jigsaw coming together. I suppose it's it's. I think that jigsaw for everyone is is evolving all the time. I suppose, but I, my, my one of my kind of ever since I started working for myself, I suppose it was always about trying to, for me as an athlete, trying to be, be the best I could be. You can do no more than as a player. All right. And that's still, and, and that's, I always say, even to a young kid now, I'd even say, you know, I even say to my young fella, just do your best, be the best. Sure, that's all you want. And, you know, if you, you win some days, you lose some days, you, you do things well, you do things, you do things not so well, you learn, you move on, you move forward. And it's the same here. I think my, from working with people since I started, it's all about whether, I enjoy working with individuals, groups, clubs, teams, coach who just want to do be the best they can be, and ultimately then. So this is where has this evolved from? It's 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 certainly maybe that's where it's evolved from. It's just another strand to that, like of of how can um how can I help? But, but so basically, I kind of see the, the importance of preparation as identified a while ago. So based on that, then who has the greatest impact on our players? Ultimately, who's the greatest impact on the players are the people delivering the sessions. So then if I can, um, through this jigsaw approach, if I can help people improve their preparation, well then potentially then they have a greater chance of having a greater impact with their players, but ultimately then 
has a greater chance of getting a better performance. So that's mm-hmm. where it's coming from. That's a great point, Paulie. And finally, since since we have have you on, on the podcast, like I said, it, it's it's January and clubs will be back pre-season training soon, and the new season will, will be kicking off before we know it. What's the best piece of advice you could give to, to clubs this month or or players who are trying to dust off the cobwebs after after uh, just what's putting their feet up for Christmas and getting back in, into training? What piece of advice can you offer the players out there? I well, I suppose it, ultimately sometimes the players are, con- are not controlled, but they're obviously influenced by what's. Um, what training is going to be delivered, but I just think to whoever, whether you're a player or whoever's involved with the uh, uh, planning the training, I just think it's a kind of a, I suppose in one sense, it's just, just patience in one sense. I know obviously the, we see this year now in Cork and particularly the leagues will be starting in, um, I think the second week of February. So obviously mm-hmm. ultimately there's a certain amount of preparation will have to be done um, to be ready to play matches um, at that time. But at the same time, it's a long year. So I think it's just a bit of patience and not trying to cram in too much um training too early and constantly then you're going to have increased risk of injury. I think that's always, without getting into the, the so many details and so many things that might lead to that, but but, but one of the big factors with injury like is, is basically unable to handle load. So, so I think that's the key thing for anyone involved with teams. Or it's just being conscious of that and and then the day, that, and that's another thing that leads into your better preparation. If you're, like if most of your team is, is, is to training consistently over a long period of time, well ultimately then, same thing again, because it doesn't matter, you could have a great a great session plan or a great number of weeks but then if a lot of your players aren't taking part in that training for different reasons well then ultimately then it doesn't matter what you've planned you're going to fall down so I think just patience over the first number of weeks and, and just um, and, and uh, build from there Like you said there's, there's a long season there and we've covered an awful lot on this chat now so if people want to find out more about the Paddy Kassan Speed Academy or Paddy's Jigsaw Approach just head over to the Paddy's website that's pkperformance.ie for more information and you'll find out ways to get in touch with Paddy there and thanks for coming on the podcast Paddy thanks for chatting to us and best of luck for the season ahead Okay, thanks very much The Star Sport Podcast is brought to you by Access Credit Union Access Credit Union, funding dreams for over 50 years. Now, Kieran, before we wrap things up, we're going to look at this week's Star Sports section. And it's only January, but it's already jam-packed, isn't it? Yeah, there's a lot going on for the for just the second week of of of, of January. So there was um, heartbreak for Corsi Rovers in the Munster Intermediate hurling final last weekend. They lost to uh, Kerry champions Kilmoyley. We have a report and reaction from that. There was also the the 2021 Carberry Junior CD final was played last weekend, and St James's beat Tyg McCorrig in that. And an interesting one was uh, I think it's Dunica Mac- McCarthy of St James's. And completed his set of medals. He's won Carberry Junior A, B, C, and D football medals at this stage. And it, and it, we thought at first that he was he was the first to, to do this. But I was actually corrected on Twitter by Marco Driscoll, who, who um, who told me that two Carmen have achieved this feat before. But what a what a feat it is to complete the, the, the full set of of Carberry Junior football championship medals. Um, as as well as that, the Cork footballers are quite busy in the McGrath Cup right now. They beat Clare away last Saturday and they were due to play Waterford on Tuesday night. So hopefully all that went well in Cork of a McGrath Cup final to look forward to this Saturday. We also have an interview with Denzel Fernandez, um, who signed for Treaty United uh, in the last couple of weeks. So it's a quite a good interview with Denzel. He's the German League soccer star who played with Cork City before, he played at Cove Ramblers, and he was with Shelburne for the last couple of seasons where he picked up a couple of first division medals. But he's now moved closer to home and he's signed up with Treaty United in, in Limerick. And they're a, a first division outfit that finished fourth in the division last year. So they've their, 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 their sights set high as well. We also um, have picked the best out of Conor Horrohan's interview with the Athletic over the over the Christmas. He did a, a super long form podcast chat with them. So we picked out the, the best bits of that. So there's an awful lot going on for for um for the second week of January. So it's a an action packed Southern Star Jack. Yeah, and as Kira mentioned, it will be in shops from Thursday morning. But as always, if you're listening to this podcast from somewhere outside of West Cork, maybe you're listening to it from Beijing gearing up for the Winter Olympics. So if you can't make it to a shop in West Cork, you can subscribe online. Just go to www.southernstar.ie forward slash e paper and you can subscribe to the Southern Star on your computer, tablet or smartphone for less than two euro per week. I'll never tire of saying those lines and I'll never tire of saying what great value that is considering all the brilliant content 
you get straight to your device. Thanks for listening to our first Star Sport podcast of 2022. Thanks again to our partners, Access Credit Union, who we are delighted have come back on board for the year ahead. And we've got some big plans lined up to celebrate that fact. If you enjoy listening to these shows, please make sure to rate, review and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. And if you're still listening at this stage of the show, why not? Make a New Year's resolution to give us a review or a subscribe or tell a friend about the Star Sport podcast and we can continue to grow this show well into 2022. Slán Tomil.